your Bibles out, and let's get ready to enjoy another study of God's Word. God, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey! I dare you to touch about five folk and tell them he's here right now. Tell them Jesus is here. He's here right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. While you, hey, glory to Jesus, my God. While you're standing, I want to take a moment to thank God for allowing us to stream these services all over the world. I want to say to those that are joining us electronically, you're in the right place at the right time. And on behalf of this family of Word of Deliverance, we welcome you to this praise and worship celebration. We thank God for who he is and for what he's doing. And you have not tuned in by coincidence, accident, or mistake. I believe it's a divine appointment. I believe the Lord has a word for you today. So just come on and join yourself in this worship. Join yourself in this praise. Join yourself in this prayer. Join yourself in the study of God's word. Even join yourself in the giving. Because the same God that's blessing us right here, he'll bless you right there. Welcome to the word. Come on, give God praise, everybody. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to the word of God. Amen. We're going to Genesis 12 and 2. That's going to be our foundational passage. And while you're getting that, I just want to say, The Lord is blessing me. Help me say it. Come on. Everybody in the house, come on and say the Lord. The Lord is blessing me. Is blessing me. Right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He woke me up. He woke me up. This morning. This morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he started me. And he started me. Yes, he did, yeah. Oh, Church load of folk to say it again with me. The Lord, the Lord is blessing me. And he's doing it right now. Come on. Of Jesus. And he started me. He started me on my way. He blessed me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right now. I just need you to put your hand together and just think about it. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I plead the blood. 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 The blood of Jesus heals. The blood of Jesus delivers. Satan, you are lying. Satan, you are lying. I come against every sickness. I come against every healness. I curse it in the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The word of God. Word of God, the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter and the second verse, we're going to declare it together, Genesis 12 and 2, let's declare it together, are you ready? Let's do it, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. The Lord bless the readers, the hearers, the doers of this holy word. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And touch your name and tell them God is up to something. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, you in for it. Mm-hmm. You're in for it. Years ago, some old church folk would ring out with a song every now and then. They would just say, God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you. Then they say, you can have it. Reach out and grab it. God's got a blessing for you. Is there anybody here that believe God's got a blessing for you? Mm. How do you grab it? You grab it with your praise. You grab it with your thank you, Jesus. You grab it with your I love you, Jesus. Grab it with your victory is mine right now. Somebody ought to give my victory is mine right now, praise. Hey! Pray with me a few moments as we journey, as we journey in this word of the Lord. 
we have most recently been declaring God's word and we reclaim the word of God from the subject, invest in the oil. God, I thank you. The oil of the Lord. We were looking at the word of God and seeing how important it was to allow his word or his oil to continually flow in our lives. And we talked about the importance of making sure that we kept fresh oil. Had to make sure we kept our oil changed. That it, nothing would get gummed up in our life. And for where God is taking us, and for where God is about to do, I'm telling you, we got to make sure we have fresh oil. The nuts might tell them, check your oil, check your oil, check your oil. And I've come here by the instruction of the Holy Ghost to make declaration unto you, to pronounce the word of the Lord unto you. And I declare that 2019 is not just another year that's rolled in. I need to get somebody's attention so that you don't act like it's just another same old day. It's not just a same old day. It's a time that God is going to get himself another level of glory. And in the Lord getting himself another level of glory, he's going to do more to yours and my story. Amen. Amen. Oh, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing is on the way. Nut somebody near you say, neighbor, neighbor. Get, ready get ready for it. The blessing is on the way. Yes. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor, yes. prepare yourself. Yes. The blessing is on the way. Yes. Hit one more somebody, say, neighbor, yes. go on and get happy now. Yes. Let your joy ring out now. The blessing is on the way. Now give God a praise. Give him a praise. Now having said all of that, having made that beautiful, wonderful declaration, having, having given you this God bless, God promised, promised word. I must now say this. And make sure you keep your praise going. But the next word is, and it's the title of this next, this, this next lesson. The blessing makes no sense. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. The blessing makes no sense. Now this time, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep your praise going now. And tell them, but say, but neighbor, you have to hear this. The blessing makes no sense. I need you to go to give God a praise right there, right there, right there. There's nothing like preparation. There's nothing like preparation. The more prepared we are for anything in life, the better we are at achieving it, the better we are at accomplishing. Preparation is required. Amen? And so God is preparing us for this Next great move he's doing. Amen. And we're going to open up this study by looking at some of God's promises to Abram. Promises made to Abram 
from God. We're going to look at what God promised Abram as he told him he would make him a great nation. Amen? We're going to look at how God told Abram, I will do for you and give unto you. Oh, that would start stirring me up. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at how God promised Abram, you shall be well known. Oh, that's some good stuff. And we're going to look at the word of God. Now God said, you will do for and give unto others. In other words, this thing going to flow up out of you. You can't keep it to yourself. <laughs> And we're going to understand as we study God's blessing upon Abram, this is a lesson, and it's all about faith, mm -hmm. trusting God, and depending upon God. It's a lesson, and we are going to see that faith in God makes no natural sense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Can we just get in the word of God a few moments in here? So Genesis 12, and if you just keep your Bible open there, I'm going to be here for a moment. Genesis 12. Genesis 12, and I'll just start at 1. Genesis 12 and 1. Genesis 12 and 1 says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. The first mention of Abram is in the 11th chapter of Genesis. He's there at the home with his father and his family. And here we come to the 12th chapter of Genesis, and God is speaking to Abram and said, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you to a place. I'm calling you to a position. God continues on with this great word to Abram. He says, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I don't know about you, but if God is talking to me like this, I am and excited, praising, running, giving God glory somebody. Oh, y'all better help me out in here. If God is speaking to me like this, baby, you, will, you are not going to beat me clapping my hand. You're not going to beat me running. You're not going to beat me shouting. If God is speaking to me like this, baby, I'm going to be giving him all the praise, double praise, triple praise, all day, all night praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him a, a continual praise. Are there any witnesses in the house? God goes on to say, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This blessing is going to be so much on you, you can't handle it all. What you touch is going to be blessed. Where you go will be blessed. Who you talk to will be blessed. Ah, blessing going to flow all up out of you. You're going to speak a blessing, live a blessing. Some of y'all really should be excited because this word is coming right upon you. It, it, fourth verse says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Abram heard the word of God. Abram began to move according to the word of God. 
And Lot went with him. Lot was the son of Abram's brother. So Lot was Abram's nephew. And as Abram takes out, he grabs his nephew, grabs his family, and takes them along with him. Are you with me? I'm going to skip down to the seventh verse. It's time six. But skip down to the seventh verse. It says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. I want you to see what's happening here. God is still talking to Abram. He said, Abram, I'm going to give this land to your seed. And the word of God said, Abram built an altar there. That meant that place became a place of worship. That became a place of thanksgiving. That became a place where Abram fell on his knees, giving God glory, giving God praise, saying hallelujah. There is yet a charge in Abram for what God has declared and what God is doing. Are you still charged? Are you still charged? That word coming to you, are you still charged? Now watch this. The eighth verse says, And he removed from thence, he kept traveling, went unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, Hyatt on the east, and there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Oh my God. This sounds like a blessed, sanctified, believe it in God, brother. Every place he goes, he's praying. Every place he goes, everywhere he turns, he's acknowledging God. Is there anybody in here like that? God has spoken to you, and you're giving him praise. you praising him in the morning. You praise him in the noonday. You praise him in the evening. You praise him when the sun go down. Come on, you still got your praise? God talking to you like this? I would think you got a praise working up on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Let your neighbor tell say, neighbor, you still got your praise? Let's keep studying this word. <laughs> yeah. The ninth verse says, and Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Are you with me? And the tenth verse says, and there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. Y'all know how you was kind of rolling with me and saying stuff with me. And I got in the 10th verse. I wish I would have talked to the production folk. It, that would have been a good place to have some, some tires squealing brakes. I mean, we were moving. We were rolling. We talked. Hallelujah. Praise your Jesus. Oh, that sounds good. God and work it up and hit and hit and hit and get to the 10th verse and, eh! and y'all did it too. I read the 10th verse and nobody said nothing. All these folk up in here. I said, maintain your praise. Keep praising God. Keep giving the glory. But we read the 10th verse. Abram was still a praying man. He still was loving on God. But we got to the 10th verse. Abram didn't do anything wrong. The circumstances changed. 
God help me preach to your people. God help me preach to your people. God said he has pronounced and he has announced some things upon his people. And life has caused some folk to run into a circumstance. Not because you did something wrong. Not because you backslid. Not because you stopped loving on God. You just ran into a circumstance. God help me in here. Because of who we are. Because of our makeup. When God promises us something. We expect nothing to happen except for the promise to be happening. But the Lord told me to tell somebody, the promise didn't go away, it's just that every now and then, for a few moments, the blessing won't make any sense. Oh, that the God promised me, why did the situation change? Why did the circumstance God help us in here. Oh, we gonna, we, oh, we gonna stomp the devil's head in a moment. Because somebody, somebody getting ready to go back to your praise. Somebody getting ready to go back to that connection you had with God. Because see, you were praising him real hard. And, and not that you did anything wrong. It's just that life ran you into a situation. And you put a break on your praise. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. That's what I'm talking about. Boy, y'all about to make me run up in here. Y'all keep that ready for me. We move it on. The blessing is rolling. Things are moving. Kids doing all right. Bills are paid. Food in the cabinet. We can do what we want to do. Buy what we want to buy, what, what we want to buy. Things are going well. We're thanking Jesus. We're praying in the morning. Praising him every day. Everything's all right. Oh, we got the promise. Oh, we connected up. We hooked up over here. We hooked up over there. It's well with our soul. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We in Sunday. Oh, we not came to church. Excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Couldn't nobody beat us dancing. We not spent the round. Ran down the aisle. Back up the other aisle. Spent the round. Grabbed the neighbor. Shouted two by two. Y'all ain't helping me. Oh, we half have it, everybody. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's still Sunday. Oh, I'm happy in my soul. You don't know like I know what he did for me. And then Monday morning come. Get over to the office and all kind of hell break loose. We were praising and then Body sick. Things shut down on your job. Got a job and not even getting paid. What are you going to do now? All that shouting and all that praising. 
what will you do now? A child in trouble. Your spouse sick. Now you're weary. As great of a time as you had yesterday. But here came today. Something happened in the land. What will you do now? Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Ask him the question, say neighbor. neighbor. What will you do now? Can we study a few, a few more moments? The word of God said in the 11th verse, it came to pass. See, there's a famine. There's a severe famine. There's no food. Things are cut off. Things are shut down. In the 11th verse, it said it came to pass when he came near unto Egypt that he said unto Sarai's wife, Behold, we headed to the hood. Now you know we used to the suburbs. <laughs> Things got tough in the suburbs. And the more food in the birds. We got to go down in the hood. There ain't no vegetables out there where we living at. We got to go to Finley Market. And Finley Market is in the hood. Can y'all roll with me? Now, we know them folk in the hood. Are y'all with me? Well, let's read some more about what Abraham was saying about the hood. The 11th verse, it came to pass. When he was come near unto Egypt, that he said unto Sarah, like, now look, you are a good-looking woman. Can I translate it a little bit? You a good-looking woman. You're a good-looking lady. And the 12th verse says, therefore, it's going to come to pass. When we get down to uh, Finley Market, <laughs> all those hood people that live down there, they're going to say, look at his wife. She a fine mamma jamma. They're going to want to kill me and keep you. Are y'all with me? Can we just, they're going to want to kill me and keep you. They're going to want to kill me and keep you for their self. Now, Hold up one moment. This is the same brother that God said, I'm going to bless you. And you're going to be a blessed. I'll even bless those that bless you and curse them that curse you. This is the same brother that when he went to one county, he built an altar there, giving God glory. When he left that county and went to the next county, he built an altar there and was giving God praise. And something changed in the land that he had nothing to do with. But a famine rolled up in the land. They had to go search for food. 
They had to go look for how they were going to make it. Went down into Egypt. I just called it the hood. He went from thanking God, praising God, saying, look what the Lord is doing. Look what the Lord has done. He went from there to fearing for his life. He went from saying, I'm building an altar. I'm praising God. He went from that place to looking like in a moment, now he's fearing for his life. He says to Sarah, they will kill me. They will kill me. Wait a minute. I thought there was a blessing pronounced on it. Oh, y'all better roll with me. I thought, I thought that, is this the same person? Did we change parties? Is this a different individual? I thought there was a blessing all over his life. And now, is this the same brother that the blessing that was pronounced on and now he's fearing for his life? God help me preach to somebody up in here. Because somebody I'm preaching to, you were that praying person. You were that thank you Jesus person. You were that individual that was building an altar before the Lord. Next thing, you wondering if you're going to live. You went from thanking Jesus for everything he was doing to wondering if you were going to make it through the night. The Lord told me to come up in here and encourage somebody. He did not change his mind. It's just that every now and then, the blessing makes no sense. Help me preach today. Say, neighbor, God did not change his mind. Say, neighbor, it's still yours. Say, neighbor, but every now and then, the blessing makes no sense. What is it that God wants his people to know? You cannot allow what you see Hear, touch, taste and smell. Determine for you whether God's got his hand on you. It may all look bad. It may all sound bad. It may all feel bad. But God is still God. His word is still his word. His blessing is still yours. But you got to stand while you're going through the moment that the blessing makes no natural sense. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need some church folk to shout hallelujah in here. Somebody's about to crush the devil's head. I said somebody's about to crush the enemy's head. Some folk in here and some folk that watch me out there, you about to get the devil back. Because he thought he had some folk. Because you came up on that moment that nothing looks like what God, oh, oh, okay. Nothing is looking like what God promised. Nothing is sounding like what you thought you heard God say. Huh. Nothing is feeling like what you were believing for. Uh-huh. God sent me here for you to tell you he didn't change his mind. It's just that you as a believer, you have to know it's still there. You got to believe God even when what you're going through makes no sense. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I say even when what you're going through makes no sense. You didn't mess up. You didn't lie on anybody. You didn't treat anybody bad. Y'all ain't helping me. 
It wasn't that something was coming up on you because you deserve for it to come up on you. What you're going through makes no sense whatsoever. But God is still God, and he wants you to be consistent even, in, even when it doesn't make sense. When it doesn't look right, keep your praise going. Don't put the brakes on your praise. Do not put the brakes on your praise. Do not put the brakes on your praise. Keep praising your God because the blessing is still yours. It's still yours. It's still yours. Somebody shout glory in here. Hit about five folks telling them it's still yours, neighbor. Touch them, I say, neighbor, do not put the brakes on your praise. Do not put the brakes on your thank you, Jesus. Do not put the brakes on your I love you, God. He's still God. He's still God. It's still so. It's still yours. Somebody show glory in this place. My, 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 my. It's still yours. It's still. Mm. 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 Lord help me. Lord help me. Help me to grab your word. When it looked like life went from real good to can't see anything. Mm. When it looked like life went from money flowing to money dried up. Lord help your people. When it goes from everything feeling good, body feeling good to getting a horrible doctor's report. Lord, help us to keep praising you. Lord, help us to understand that even when the blessing makes no sense, you're yet my God. You're yet my God. Your word is yet true. Your word, your word, your word, your word. Somebody shout glory in this. Somebody shout glory in this house. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. You're worth smiling. You were looking happy. Things were going good. Mm, you were minding your business. You were not messing with anybody. And looked like in a moment, situations just tried to wipe the smile off of your face. Seemed like in a moment, the enemy tried to knock you down. Seem like in a moment you couldn't find good news with a flashlight. But the Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody he's still God. His word is still true and his word is still for you. Don't let go of your praise. Don't put brakes on your belief because God will do what he said he will do. But you got to praise God again. You got to praise God again. You got to praise God again. Somebody shout glory in this. Shout glory in this house. Shout glory in this. My, 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 my. Hit about five folks. Tell them praise God again. Praise God again. Praise God again. Mm. 
need some praises in the sanctuary. I need some praises in the sanctuary. Stoop on the devil's head. I need some praises. I need some praises. I need some praises. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to read that, but let me summarize it. As Abram and Sarah and Lot and all the others went on down into Egypt, as they got in the hood, yeah, the brothers did look at her. Say, yes, yeah, she does look good. Next thing you know, they've taken his wife, taken her to Pharaoh. I need some help up in here. It's looking real bad. It's looking real gloomy. But I got to tell somebody, I don't care how it looks right here. You better keep your vision from in here. I can't see good, but I can feel good. By my faith, all is well. By my faith, God's got it in control. By my faith, God is yet a keeper. By my faith, I got a hallelujah on the inside. Can somebody shout yes, Lord, in this place? When you keep on praising, when you keep praising, when you can't see it, God moves. When you can't see it, when you can't hear it, when you can't feel it, God is up to something. God is moving something. God is driving something. Wait a minute, wait one minute. Touch my say, neighbor, when you can't see it, God is up to something. Keep your praise going. Let me get on to the end of this. Well, God worked that thing. Abraham feared for his life because he figured Pharaoh would take his life in order to get his wife. But because God was moving, I'm preaching to somebody. You can't see it, but the Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody God is moving, God is moving, God. Watch this. Because God was moving, the same one he feared became the one that blessed him. Y'all missed that. Let me say it again. The one he feared became the very one that blessed him. I'm preaching real hard. Some, oh, oh, um. That's why you can't get angry at who you think is your enemy. Did you hear what I said? You can't get upset because of who you feel like is trying to destroy you. God's got a way of turning that thing. And while the enemy didn't know what he was doing, I said the enemy didn't know what he was doing. He thought he was doing one thing, God had him doing another. He thought he was giving great gifts to Abram's, to, to Sarah's brother. He said, I'm going to hook your brother up real good. So I can have you. 
And he literally made Abram wealthy. God kept his eyes closed until he had established great wealth upon Abram. Be careful how you run your mouth. If God is not showing it, maybe you shouldn't tell it. Don't think you always got to be speaking from your mouth. Sometimes it's just good to shut up and watch God do it. As smart as we think we are every now and then, it's good to get the gift of shut up. Be quiet and just let God do it. And while Abram was yet quiet, Pharaoh throwing riches on him and throwing riches on him and throwing riches on him. And after he thrown all these riches on Abram, God comes in, shakes Pharaoh's house, shakes it in such a way that he said, what in the world is this? He knew when God came in as an angry God. He said, man, what is this? Why did you tell me she was your wife? Abram said, And the one he thought was going to kill him said, take her, take this wealth, take these riches, take this gold, take this silver, and get out of here. Abram got Sarah, got Lot, got the silver, got the gold, and got up out of there. Famine over. Famine over. Famine over. Famine over. Somebody shout glory. Hit five folks, tell them famine over. Wait a minute. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. But I got, to, I, got to, I got to help you see this. Take me to Genesis 13 and 1. Mm -hmm. You got to get this. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. Keep a praise on the inside. Tell somebody else, famine over. Genesis 13 and 1, it says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, got up out of the hood. He and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. Are y'all with me? Now, wait a minute, I need you to understand something. Anytime the Lord allows us to go into an ugly situation, I need you to understand this about God. He will never allow you to come out the same way you went in. You got, you got to get this. You got to get, the, you got to get this. Oh, you got to get this. Let me say it again. If the Lord allows us to go in to an ugly situation, we will never come out the same as we went in. Now, now you got to get this. Listen, listen up. Because there's some folk praying just to get back. Lord, just let, Lord, just let me get back. Lord, just let me get back. Just, just let me get back to that place. Lord, just, just let me get back. You know, that's not God. I told you, you got to study him. Lord, just let me get, Lord, let, let me just get back to where I had 
had that, that, that friendship. Lord, just let me get back to where I was feeling all right. Lord, just let me get back where I had a piece of money to make. Just, Lord, just let me get back. And Lord told me to tell you, he ain't hearing that. If his hand was on your life when you went in to the ugly place, his hand would be on your life and you're not coming back to where you were. You coming out better. Oh, you got to come. You coming out. Hit about five folks, tell them, baby, you coming out better. You, come, you coming out, but you coming out better. You coming out of that thing. Oh, there's restoration coming. There's a turnaround, but you're coming out better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take me to Genesis 13 and 2. Watch this. He just came out, right? And Abram was very rich. He didn't go in like that. But look how he came out. And Abram was very what? Rich in what? Cattle in silver and in It's about to say he came out better. I say, neighbor, you coming out better. Now watch this. Watch this. Now that makes no sense. What we just looked at makes absolutely no natural sense. Now, how many know that doesn't make sense? But the blessing makes no sense. Are you with me? Now watch this. Be careful. Looking at somebody you admire and the hand of God is upon them and the blessing of God is upon them. Be careful how you look at somebody and you know the Lord was using them And the Lord allows you to see them go into Egypt. The Lord allows you to see them journey into the hood. The Lord allows you to see them go into a dark place. That is not the time to run away. The one that prayed for you is now sick. That's not the time to run. The one that was helping everybody looked like they need help themselves. That's not the time to run. Did you hear me? That's not the time to run. That's not the time to talk. That's not the time to walk. Because if the Lord had positioned you to be that close, are you hearing me? Understand this. When they come out, you come out. Is, is anybody getting this in here? I said, when they come out, you come out. And if they come out better, you come out better. Watch this. Watch. I, I'm finishing. So, let, let's review real quick. We saw Abram. He got all those promises from God. Are you hearing me? He built altars. He was praying. He was doing things right. Abram did not mess up. But situation changed. 
Are you hearing me? And that was a time he had to understand, wait a minute, the blessing makes no sense. I can't stop praising God because what I see is not good. What I hear is not good. What I'm feeling is not good. I got to keep my praise up. Are you hearing me? He went from looking for the blessing to fearing for his life. But God kept working. Are you hearing me? Can we say that Abraham did everything absolutely right during this moment? I can't say that. Oh, here's a lesson here. I can't say. I'm not going to judge. I can't say Abraham did everything right at that moment. As he's going into that fearful place, I don't, because I've heard some Church folk criticize Abram. Well, why did he just keep believing God? Why, why did he even fear for his life? I'm not going to judge him. Because I wasn't going through what he was going through. And I don't know how I'm going to act when I go through. So rather than judge him, I'm going to say, God, help me when I go to my place. You better be careful jumping on somebody else and, and you haven't made it through your place. You haven't made it through your time. One thing I do know, God was with him. So, Abram, Sarah, Lot, all of them women went down into that dark place. Are you with me? Now check this out. When God brought them out, Word of God said, Abram came forth, and what was that 13 and 2 again? With, he was, he came out what? He came out what? He came out very rich in cattle, in silver, and in, and you do understand who gave him that, right? Who, who gave it to him? It was God, but through who? Are you with it? His enemy gave it to him. The one he, Pharaoh, help me preach your neighbor. These are points we can't skip. Pharaoh gave him the stuff. That's why you got to be careful how you look at who you think is your enemy. Got to make your enemy your footstool. Got to make your enemy bless you. Are you still with me? I'm about to close. So he comes out very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. Now I want you to go to 13 and 5. I just want the first three words. And lot also. Now you got, y'all so didn't get it yet. Somebody didn't get it yet. Somebody didn't get it yet. Lot did not run from his uncle called Unk and some stuff. He was with Unk when they left granddaddy's house. He was with Unk when he was building the altars. He was with Unk when they went down into Egypt. And check this out. He was with Unk when they came out. And Lot came out rich too. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Hit somebody tell them, I'm coming out rich too. I'm, I'm coming out blessed too. Up to y'all ought to give God up. You ought to get, you ought to get. You ought to do better than that. You ought to. about five folks tell them, me too, me too, me too, me too. I got to quit. I, I hope y'all got this. The blessing makes no sense. Now check this. You might as well know it. God spoke the promise to Abram. To Abram, the, the, uh, the promise 
were so powerful that it flowed to everyone near Abram. Are you with me? It was so powerful that it flowed to everyone near Abram. In this lesson, we must also understand the power of unity. In the 11th chapter of Genesis, before you get to the 12th chapter where this is happening, the word of God said that God came down and the people were so united that they were about to be successful doing something that was not God's will. And the word of God said God had to confound their language and separate them because they were united. They were about to accomplish something that was not God's will. If united folk can accomplish something that's not God's will, what can united folk do that is God's will? Are you, Are you with me? Are you with me? So they came, they left Paul Paul's house, house united, went to the place of the altar united, went to Egypt united, and came out rich. Come on. Came out rich united. Now you keep studying that Genesis and, and you'll see Lot was rich too. I don't even have to tell you about Sarah. You know she had her stuff together. Somebody give God some praise, right? Oh, come on, give him a praise. If you're going to keep praising God, even when the blessing makes no sense, stand up on your feet and give him a holler, give him a thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. God will do what he said he will do. He stands by his word and he will come through. You say it, come up. God will do what he said he will do. Stands by his word. Oh, yes, and he Say it again, God will do, yeah. What he said he will do. Stand by his word. He will come through. Everybody say that again. God will do, yeah. What he said he will do. Stands right by his word. He will come through, yeah. No weapon, come on. No Come on. Fall against me. me. Oh, yeah. Shall prosper. It won't work. It won't work. It won't. It won't no work. weapon. No weapon. No. no weapon. That's ever formed. Shall prosper. Yeah, yeah. It won't work. No. will do what he said he will, will, will do. He stands right by his word. He told me to tell you, he will come through. Come on and you said, y'all. What, what he said he will do. Stands right by his word. He will, come on, say it. No weapon, no. Ever formed, formed share, yeah. Shall it's not going to work, no, no. It won't work. Somebody say this it won't work, 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 it won't work. no, it won't work, it won't work. It won't work. Say this the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is 
The devil is a liar. It won't be. Oh, no weapon, no weapon. It won't work, no. Listen, listen. The blessing makes no sense. Do not allow the enemy with his lie to change your mind concerning your praise, concerning your trust. The Lord told me to come and strengthen your faith. He gonna do what he said he's gonna do it. Touch about five folk, tell them God is doing it, God is doing it, God is, come on, that's right. Get agreement all over the house, agreement all over, God is, yes he is. He's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it. Yes he is, yes he is, yes he is. <laughs> this morning, I often say no matter who the characters are, Ultimately, it's always a study of God, how God moves, how God works. Faith is about knowing God. It's about pleasing God. And there may be somebody in here this morning that hasn't surrendered their life unto God. I don't, I'm not concerned in the least bit where you come from, what you've been doing, what you've been through. I know we worship a God, we serve a God that's greater than all of that. But if you're here this morning and you desire prayer, if you're here this morning and you haven't given God your whole life, you haven't surrendered your everything, come, 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 come. We'll pray for you. Come. If you're not saved, that means you haven't come and said, Lord, come into my life. Lord, save me. Deliver me. Come, come, come. come. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. That's the need prayer for any reason. You need prayer for any reason. You need prayer for any reason. You come because God's a deliverer. I said he's a deliverer. Come on. That's right. Come on. Say it again. God will do. That's right. Come on. They're coming. And the saints ought to be praising God as they're coming. They're coming from everywhere. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. God will do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say that again. God will do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What he said he will do. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. God will do what he said he will do. Stand by his word. He will come through. Now say, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. Born against me shall prosper. It won't work, it won't work, it won't work. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon. That's a perform. Shell. It's not going to work, no, no. Listen, listen, there may be someone here, there may be someone here on this last Sunday in the first month of this new year that will say, I know I felt the presence of God in this place. I know this is where he's placing me. I know this is where he wants me to be. They're coming by the thousands. You might as well get in the line right now and come on in here and join this family of word. Whether you're up on the balcony, whether you're down here on the first floor, wherever you are, you ought to come right now. Because we got great things, we got great things that God has prepared and spoken for our lives. And you better come on and be a part of it. For prayer, just come right in front of me. For membership, discipleship, come over to my left. We have greeters ready to welcome you, ready to welcome you to the house of the Lord. Come on, come on. Are you here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. No weapon, no weapon, no. No weapon. Yeah. It's not going to work, no, no. It won't work. No weapon, no, no. no weapon. 
formed shall it's not going to work no listen say this it won't work 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 the devil is a liar the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. It won't work no weapon. No weapon against me shall prosper. It won't work. It won't work. It won't.